Are you struggling with high blood sugars and would you like to get this nice steady blood glucose line in range? Then keep watching because I'm gonna share with you six tips that helped me to lower my blood sugar. Let's go! Hey, my name is Tom. I've been type 1 diabetic for over 30 years and on this channel I help you on your diabetes journey. So how do you lower your blood sugars? Well, you should know there is no magic formula and you will not be able to do it overnight. You will have to focus and work hard, just like I do, plus to make it even more difficult, you will have to be very patient. Not too aggressive, not too fast, because if you overdo it, it might lead to severe hypoglycemia, which can be very dangerous. But I want to give you a few quick tips that worked for me, you can implement these tips right away and these tips helped me keep my blood sugar between 4 and 8 millimoles for most of the time. Sometimes these small tweaks lead to giant peaks. Please keep in mind that I'm not a doctor, I'm a diabetic just like you and everything I share here is not medical advice, it's just my personal experience. You should consult any treatment decisions with your doctor. But now let's get into the tips. Tip number one is to stay active and exercise frequently. Why? Because exercise increases insulin sensitivity and insulin is a hormone that breaks down sugars in our body. Insulin works for us to help us lower our blood sugar so we want to be as sensitive as possible and exercise definitely helps with that. What kind of exercise is the best? You should focus on aerobic and resistance exercise. So things like walking, hiking, a light jog works really well for me or just staying active during the day. On the other hand, anaerobic exercise where you bring your heart rate very high like quick sprints, high intensity training or weightlifting are not so good for bringing blood sugar down. In some instances they might even bring it higher. So please be aware of that and choose the exercise that works the best for bringing your blood sugar down. Tip number two is eat the right food. But what is the right food? It is the food with low glycemic profile. You should try to eat low carb or no carb food and try to replace carbs with fat or protein, which are much better for stable low blood sugar in the long term. Great healthy sources of energy with a very little impact on your blood sugar are seafood, meat, eggs, oats, beans, sweet potatoes, vegetables and some non-sweet fruit like avocado for example. I really like avocado, it's probably my favorite food right now. Also you should try to eat more foods with fiber. Why? Because fiber helps slow digestion and sugar absorption and that is really good for a constant lower blood sugar levels. Foods that have a lot of fiber are again avocado, peas, chickpeas, lentil, oats, all kinds of nuts and seeds, berries and dark chocolate. Another great tip is eat more homemade food rather than going out and eating restaurants. Why? Because you have much more control over what is going on your plate if you make the food yourself. You never know when you're in a restaurant what actually is in the food that you have, how much sugar, how much carbs and it's very difficult to control. Also, the restaurants try to make the food taste really good and what tastes good usually has a lot of sugar, a lot of carbs or sweet stuff in it. So be aware of that and if you like cooking, if you like staying at home, eating at home, this is definitely the option to go to get your blood sugar down. Don't forget to carb count and take the insulin with every carby meal. Tip number three is an easy one. Stay hydrated. Why? Because drinking a lot of water helps your kidneys to flush the excessive blood sugar away from your body through urine. I told you, this one was easy. Tip number four, less easy, try to avoid stress. I realized that extreme stress can spike up my blood sugars like crazy. Let me show you something. This is my body's reaction to a very stressful meeting between 10 and 11 am. You can see there is an extreme spike. There was no food involved and this spike was caused only by stress. Obviously I don't have a magic formula to reduce everyone's stress levels 
but if you're aware of that, it can help you be more proactive and manage stress level and the insulin dosage that you take during these situations. Speaking of proactivity, tip number five, be proactive and plan your day. If you plan to be staying at home, sitting around all day, you might want to increase your basal rate slightly and not to correct at the point where your blood sugar already is high. On the other hand, when you're planning to go for a long hike and you will be hiking all day, you might want to decrease the basal rate so that you don't get into a hypo and you prevent getting into hypo and then having to deal with that. This is of course very difficult and requires a lot of self-discipline to plan for every day in this amount of detail, but this can really make wonders, I promise. Speaking of proactivity, quick tip, always pre-bolus for quick carbs. If I plan to eat pasta, pizza or some sugary food, I know my blood sugar will spike like crazy. So what I do is I take my insulin at least 20 minutes before I eat so I avoid the spike or at least minimize the spike caused by the amount of quick carbs that I take into my body. So always remember to pre-bolus when you eat quick carbs. Tip number six is test your blood sugar frequently or use CGM. All the tips that work for me that I mentioned here, these are really working for me, for my body, but everyone is different. So the more you test your blood sugar, the more information you have for your decision making, the better decisions you can make. So really testing, testing and testing. This is the most important thing that will really help you dramatically to lower your blood sugar because having all the data will let you make a good decision. If you don't have data, you will probably make a bad decision. What you might try to do is schedule a short meeting with yourself once a week, 15 minutes, and put it on your calendar. And during these 15 minutes, just focus on reviewing your blood sugar trends in the last week and see if you can identify any patterns that would require slight adjustments to your insulin dosage. It's really only 15 minutes, it will take you this little time and you can do that instead of watching Netflix or whatever activity you do that's not really bringing so much value into your life. Just replace that with this short meeting with yourself. Please remember that you will need to be patient because perfect blood sugars are not a destination. It's not a point in time to which you will get and from this point on the blood sugars will be perfect forever. Perfect blood sugars is more a journey that you will have to navigate for the rest of your life. And on this channel, I try to help you with that. If you like my approach, consider subscribing. And if you want to learn how to reduce your next A1C test results, check the video on the screen now. I will see you in the next Type 1 Talks video. Ciao.